Welcome to this special edition of Frequency Matters, the RF and microwave update series. I'm Pat Hindle. I'm here with my co-host Gary LaRude, and our special guest today is Thomas Emanuelsom, CTO at GapWaves. Welcome, Thomas. Hi, Pat, and hi, Gary, and thank you very much for inviting me here. It's great to have you on the show. So some people might not be familiar with GapWaves, so can you give us a little overview of the company and your unique technology that you have? Yeah, absolutely. I'll do that. So GapWaves is a company uh, founded in 2011. It was uh, started up as a startup from Chalmers University of Technology uh, by Professor Percy Machildo uh, after long uh, time research. Uh, we were introduced to the NASDAQ first north in end 2016 uh, and brought up the company from there. We are today approximately 30 people doing uh, microwave and millimeter wave design, especially in antennas. So tell us a little bit about the GapWaves technology, the GapWave waveguide, what problems it solves and what applications are well suited for it. Yeah, sure. Uh, so the Gap Wave Guides uh, technology is, uh, as I said, it, it's basically uh, long time research uh, based on uh, hard and soft surfaces. And it's a way of actually mitigating the problem of building waveguides connecting the waveguide walls to the waveguide lid. And uh, as anyone that has been doing uh, that as a, a millimeter wave designer, you know, the hassle of, of connecting waveguide walls to the lid. And that is what you actually uh, avoid when doing using the, uh, this, what, what we usually daily call the pin structure. So you can build waveguides without connecting physically the waveguide walls to, to, the, to the lid, uh, avoiding their, uh, glue, silver epoxy, bracing, welding, or 1,000 screws or something like that. So you can build multi-layer waveguides instead, easily uh, by doing this. The applications that we're actually looking into is basically uh, phased array antennas is the first thing that we're doing. And we are targeting, uh, for example, right now, 5G uh, systems, where you need a phased array antenna at, at uh, anywhere from uh, KU band up. Uh, we are currently doing development at 28 gigahertz and 24 gigahertz, building the low loss antennas in total in, in waveguide technology and uh, using the, the gap waveguide as a connection mean uh, for the multi layer structures and also to introduce the PCB with the components into the, the, the uh, antenna structure. The other thing that we are doing is, is uh, automotive radar and in the light of uh, having uh, self-driving cars and so on. It's very uh, essential to have a good sensor uh, and going up in frequency to between 76 and 81 gigahertz is a very good way to use waveguides. You get rid of a lot of losses and can do a very efficient antenna in, in, in that way. Typically for an automotive radar, you say that you double the, the, the target area that you're looking at and mm -hmm. you can play around with the, the waveguide uh, porch and the antenna to do different uh, pattern shaping and so on. It's a very efficient antenna. For the 5G, typical antenna has an efficiency of, the antenna as such has an efficiency of around 90% uh, compared to a PCB type antenna that is most likely around 50%. So the main challenges that you have in 5G millimeter wave is losing any kind of power. So your antenna is more efficient. How are you managing to integrate it into 5G millimeter wave systems? So what we're doing right now is building this complete phase three antenna module. It's integrated with the components. Uh, the gap wave gap technology also has a very good way of connecting the PCB to the, to the antenna structure, uh, which is normally very difficult in a wave guide antenna. Uh, we do that again using the gap waveguide structure. Uh, we have full beam steering capability and up down conversion inside the antenna. So there's an interface for controlling as well as IF and LO injection into the antenna. One of the uh, interesting things I've noticed is you do waveguide filters. Can you talk a little bit about the advantages of using the gap waveguide for filters? Yeah, so. Uh, Actually, several applications for doing that. So uh, specifically for the, for the 5G antenna, we have as an option, you can introduce a separate waveguide layer containing filters per antenna feed. So we can build waveguide very low loss filters into the antenna. Specifically, this is, uh, we have been looking at several uh, different filters. 
But main target right now is this EESS band, uh, where we have a very narrow guard band from the lower N258 band, that's 24.25 down to the ESS band, which is 24 gigahertz. And we can build a four pole filter having zeros and so on to cut out the uh, injection of any spurious or noise into the ESS band. And that is particularly well suited for doing the waveguide, multi layer waveguide structural technology. And you also do some flange adapters. Talk about that. Yeah, so flange adapters is, is a specific way of using the technology. We uh, actually, in our lab, we're using this frequently, uh, connecting anyone that has been doing connecting waveguide at uh, V or W band or E band knows the hassle with uh, all the screws, if you, especially if you want to do uh, multi measurements and you have need to screw and unscrew and screw and unscrew. Uh, so what we can do instead is use on our uh, adapters, which is actually a small insert that you can have in between the, the waveguide flanges with pin structure. You don't have to screw, you can tolerate up to 100 micron air gap without affecting the performance. Uh, so you can easily have uh, volume production or volume lab measurements by just connecting the, the waveguide by, by hand or, or just let them be as, as, as they are. Yeah, you have a very interesting video that we'd like to show a short video of that technology right now. It's amazing the uh, uh, low loss that it has and how it also is able to adapt to any kind of bending you know, to a certain extent and still maintain good connection. So let's take a look at that now. When connecting waveguide flanges together, it's usually very hard to achieve a good connection without tightly screwing or pressing the flanges together. As we see, the mismatch is not caused by misalignment of the flanges. When we press the flanges tightly together, we achieve a good connection similar to the calibrated state. However, the connection is immediately lost when the pressure is released. If we instead use Gapway's flange adapter, we do not need to use any pressure to achieve a good connection. Here we place Gapway's flange adapter directly on the guiding pins of the standard waveguide flange, and then we gently push the flanges together. As we can see, we immediately achieve a good connection with good matching and low insertion loss. This means that we have a very low leakage. We now also show that we have a stable and robust connection that is minorly affected by mechanical misalignments. We can even handle minor air gaps between Gapway's flange adapter and the standard waveguide flange. As you can see here, we are now going to introduce a 100 micrometer air gap between the left standard waveguide and Gapway's flange adapter. And even with this air gap, we still achieve very good matching and more importantly a very low insertion loss, which means that we have close to no leakage in this connection. So to summarize, I would like to show some of our latest releases of products starting with the 28 GHz base station antenna. This one is doing 56 dBm of ARP at 9 dB packed, packed off conditions. And this counts to DC power consumption of below 40 watts. Next generation that is developing right now is, is uh, lowering the power consumption to below 25 watts. And as a spin-off from this one, we are also taking the filter solutions to standalone filters. This is a typical E-band point-to-point -point radio filter covering 71 to 76 gigahertz, 0.6 dB of losses, and only five millimeter of thickness. And for the higher frequencies like D-band, we have targeting point-to-point -point radio antennas covering 140 to 150 gigahertz. Uh, this one is a 24 dBi antenna and it also comes in a version with 32 dBi. Very thin, 6 mm of thickness. 
Yes, we want to thank you for uh, coming by today and explaining the uh, waveguide technology. It seems like you've got some very interesting applications on the cusp of going commercial, both in 5G and uh, automotive. So we wish you and the company well. Thank you very much.